a beautiful 82 degree day in Cleveland. A look from above the Quicken Loans Arena as we close in on game time. The Fan Fest continues outside on the plaza. Tonight here at the Q, it is game one of the best of seven Eastern Conference final series with the Orlando Magic facing the Cleveland Cavaliers as TNT's exclusive playoff coverage continues. Hi, everybody. I'm Mark Hobbit, along with Doug Collins. We'll be joined in a moment by Craig Sager. It has been a, uh, a long time between games for the Cavaliers, but they're ready to go, and so are we. Let's check out the McDonald's starting lineups for the Magic. Up front, Dwight Howard, who finished strong in this series against Boston. Hito Trugan, who had a sparkling game seven against the Celtics. The rookie Courtney Lee makes his return as a starter for the Cavaliers. The MVP LeBron James averaging 33 a game of the postseason. He's on the front line with Anderson Parajal. And the British and Galstis backboard of Galante West and Mo Williams. All right, Doug. What do you see as the keys to tonight's matchup? Well, Marv, you know, I'm always a big first quarter guy. And the start of this game, the big game seven win in Boston, the Magic, they're coming in here very confident. Eight full days of rest for Cleveland. How sharp are they going to be to start this game tonight? And then the transition game for Cleveland, it's get back and defend that three-point line. And for Orlando, it's get back and defend the paint and keep LeBron James out of that transition game for Cleveland. The defense never rests. Cleveland is known for their defense. People don't realize Orlando, with all these threes they shoot, play very, very good defense. They've done a great job closing down the paint against the Cavs in the regular season. And then the imprint. Is it going to be the defensive player of the year, Dwight Howard? His rebounding, his shot blocking. Or is it going to be the MVP of the league, LeBron James, who as good as he was in the regular season, has been even better in the playoffs. That's very scary. And LeBron getting ready for that traditional choreographed routine. The Cleveland Cavaliers with decisive four-game sweeps over Detroit and Atlanta. The Orlando Magic coming off that tough seven-game series of the Celtics, preceded by the six-game victory over the Philadelphia 76ers. You know, Marv, a lot of people are wonder, like, why would Stan Van Gundy change his starting lineup? You've just beaten Boston, game seven on the road. J.J. Redick has started those games for you. Why is Courtney Lee starting? Well, because it's a game of matchups. And when you look at Cleveland and their backcourt, they basically play two point guards. And Delonte West and Mo Williams, Stan Van Gundy felt that was a bad matchup for J.J. Redick. And I expect to see Courtney Lee play a lot against LeBron James, maybe even to start the game, to try to keep Hito Turkoglu out of foul trouble. And the officials bet of Salvatore, Rod Garrison, and Ken Maurer. You saw the Cavaliers' record at home, the very best in the league, 39-2 during the regular season, including playoffs, 43-2. Orlando's been a very good road team, and that carries over the last two seasons, 27 and 14 in the regular season this year, and they have won three road games in the playoffs. Cleveland in control as we get underway. Pergolo is on James here at the start. Barajan! Well, if Dwight Howard is going to roam around and guard LeBron James, he is a brilliant passer. What a great pass there to start the game off and get Anderson Barrett on an easy basket. And as the guys mentioned on the pregame, LeBron James opening up against Rafer Alston. Here is Rashad Lewis. Mo Williams played by Alston. They double up on James. Nice pass again. Barrett is fouled, so he'll head to the line. Now, when you play with LeBron James, you have got to find the open areas. LeBron has seen every defense there is. Marv, it's not like the, the Orlando's going to come out and shock him with something he hasn't seen. And they basically run a zone offense. Whenever LeBron catches that ball on the wing, you're going to see Varejao cutting, and you've seen it twice already here where he's been the recipient of a layup and now two free throws. And then as the Judas Ogaskas will look for that open area as well. So LeBron loves to pass. And it's a Varejao a year ago 
was having a rough time had come back from a holdout setback by injuries not a major factor in the rotation but due to injuries this season he's worked his way into the starting lineup and has had an excellent year and Marty pointed out LeBron James is on Ray for Alston and what he's going to do he's going to roam defensively look for him to be the help guy on any penetration Courtney Lee not able to hit but White Howard is right there he just pulled down the shot clock just what we need here is a delay Cleveland hasn't played in eight full days. The last thing they want is a delay here with uh, Dwight Howard pulling down the basket and the shot clock collapsing from behind. Dwight Howard with a powerful dunk for the first two points for the Magic. Here's another look. Well, this is what concerns Mike Brown is the offensive rebounding of Dwight Howard. You're going to see the shot clock collapse down there, so we'll see how long it takes for them to repair this. He said anytime Orlando penetrates and you have to come over and help this is his concern. He averages almost five offensive rebounds a game and really that's where he gets most of his points Marvin gets to the foul line is getting to that glass. White Howard who came back strong following that subpar game five in Boston and then criticized head coach Stan Van Gundy for his lack of touches. Game six, 23 points, 22 rebounds. Strong game seven, 16 rebounds, five blocked shots. The defensive player of the year and has caused this delay as they make the repairs to the 24 second clock. So, uh, while they work things out at the basket to our right, we'll take a break. Back in a moment. Welcome back to Cleveland, where our early score is 4-2. to two. The last two points coming on Dwight Howard's powerful dunk that brought down the shot clock. The officials then met with Pat Fitzgerald, who runs the arena here, the Quicken Loans Arena. They talk things over. They do not want to delay the game any further, so they're going to bring out small shot clocks that they say they're going to put on the corners of the court, which they will use for the first half. Then at halftime, they will take the time to repair the big shot clocks and put them back there. But they're trying, the officials are, not to have a major delay and trying not to do it at this point. They just want to make it safe in both baskets, and they're trying to get some smaller shot clocks to come into the corners. Thank you, Mark. All right, thank you, Craig. I do recall a, a similar <laughs> a scenario involving Shaquille O'Neal several years back in a game in Phoenix where he broke the backboard, which led to a very long delay. Well, now, this will be interesting because when I played, that's where the shot clocks were in the corners. And Marv, you get to condition to where to look for that shot right. clock. These players are all looking above the basket. Now it's going to be very important for them to communicate with one another as that shot clock starts to wind down because your eyes are going to want to go to the top of the basket and uh, it's going to be over in the corner. So this will be a little bit of an adjustment for the players. Well, the Orlando Magic, a team that went 59 and 23 in the regular season. They beat the uh, 76ers in six in the opening round. They had trailed in that series two games to one and then defeated the Celtics four games to three, concluding matters the other night in Boston. And uh, 59 wins, 59 to 23, the second best record in franchise history. The 95-96 Magic went 60 and 22. That was a team led by uh, Shaq and, and Penny Hardaway. The Cavaliers with a magnificent season, 66 and 16, best record in the NBA, 66 wins, a franchise record. They won 13 of the last uh, 14 games, and then convincing sweeps over the Pistons 4-0, over the Hawks 4-0, Doug winning all eight games by double digits. And the Cavs, the last game played was May the 11th, at Atlanta, that was nine days ago, but as you mentioned, it's eight full days since they have played. So now if they play well and they <laughs> win here tonight, it'll be said, well, the rest really helped. And if they lose or don't play well, it'll be said, well, they're rusty. Too long a layoff. Well, that's the way it always works, uh, you know, Marv. The, the thing about the, the Cleveland that I've noticed, and I've been around this team a lot this year just doing games, they have such great team chemistry. They really like being around each other. They hold each other accountable 
That all starts with the relationship that LeBron James has with Mike Brown and the energy and passion and the love of the game that LeBron plays with. It filters down to the rest of this team. No place would he rather be than in the gym playing basketball, and his team, I think, reflects that. It's almost like a fraternity. It is, no question, and, th and these guys really enjoyed being around one another. All right, let's get back to Craig Sager. Craig. Well, Bob Doug was talking about the fact that the shot clocks are now in the corner and an adjustment the players will have to make. I talked to Ray Peralson, the point guard for Orlando. He says, hey, this is like the summer league in New York. I'm there every summer. Every summer I play in the playgrounds in New York. Every summer that's where the old shot clock is. I talked to LeBron James. He goes, just like the AAU days, instead of having the shot clock there, we also have the shot clock and the score there. So we always looked over in the corner. So it's been a while, but they are used to having the shot clocks in the corner. And as I mentioned, they will repair the shot clocks above the basket at halftime after uh, Superman brought the uh, house down <laughs> a few moments ago for Orlando. Mark. All right, Craig and Doug, the last time that the Magic and the Cavaliers met, it was not a good situation for the, uh, the Cavaliers. In fact, their worst loss of the season. At one point, they were down by as many as 41. They lost by 29, 116 to 87. One of the worst losses in LeBron James's career. Rashard Lewis scored 22 points. White Howard, 20 and 11. Magic limiting the Cavs to 37% shooting. LeBron did have 26 and in the regular season for what it's worth because so frequently regular season has no bearing at all on what occurs in the playoffs but the magic did take two out of three the uh, decisive wins in orlando and uh, you see the numbers over the course of those three games well the concerns are plus 10 points in the paint there are plus nine fast break and mark plus 11 at the three-point line so that's why mike brown all he has talked about is getting his team back defensively now this is not a big change for cleveland cleveland was the best at defending the three all year long so it's not like this big character change we've got all of a sudden now go from defending the paint to defending the three-point line the big thing you have in a game like this is you have what you call cross matches mark where the guy you're guarding is not guarding you so anytime that ball is live you have to really be talking and communicating to make sure somebody picks up your guy that's where teams get those open threes, especially this uh, Orla Orlando Magic squad. And Orlando's won eight of the last 11 meetings against Cleveland. You see Dwight Howard going around telling fans, it's my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, just to put it in perspective here with Dwight Howard, that dunk tonight was his 40th dunk of the playoffs. He has 87 field goals. So 45% of his field goals in the playoffs have come off dunks. That's why the importance of taking away his dunks and layups and make him be a shot maker rather than a guy who just overpowers you and dunks the ball. And play has resumed with the uh, shot clocks along the baseline. Let's check back in with Craig. Well, Martin, to make that transition quicker at halftime, they're going to put an entire stanchion, a new stanchion, a new backboard, everything up at halftime. The one that's down there right now where Orlando is shooting will be wheeled off, and they'll bring the other one on. Rather than try to fix this one that they have right now, they'll bring an entire new one, and they're working on it right now. All right, that was deflected out by Orlando. There you see the baseline shot clock. And it is tough to find, as you mentioned, uh, Doug, at, in, in the earlier days of the NBA, earlier days of the of the shot clock, players were custom to Varajal again. Quick start for Varajal. In fact, he's the only Cavalier to attempt a shot here in the opening minutes. Alston's pass deflected. Lewis is on it. Turgill being played here by West. Alston for three. Back tap but handled by Varajal. Mo Williams, who has not put up the same kind of numbers that he put up during the, the regular season, an all-star campaign for Williams. They uh, try to double LeBron. West is open for three. Yes. And he's played very, very well. I thought that when you looked at the first two rounds of the playoffs, LeBron James and Delonte West have been the two best offensive players on the Cleveland Cavaliers. And you can see LeBron James. LeBron James had a wide open 15 footer. He is really making a conscious effort to get his teammates involved. He passed it up. Delonte West spots up. It's been he and Anderson Barajal get them off to a great start here tonight.
Back in Cleveland, a 9-2 start here for the Cavaliers. And right here, time for Gatorade around the cooler. Let's check in once again with Craig Sager. Well, Marv, our delay, of course, was caused by the strength of Dwight Howard bringing down the shot clock. His feats at the practice facility in Orlando are pretty notorious. At that practice facility, they also have shot clocks, so they are double bolted down, making them extra strong so things like that don't happen. But also in the weight room, he has been known to bench press over 360 pounds. Then he takes 225 pounds and routinely does reps of 25. 25 at 225, which just happens to be the max that you see at the NFL Combine. So he definitely is super strong. Mark. Uh, there's the alley oop for Howard thrown by Turgaloo. Craig Sager, Doug, it should be pointed out, just set a record for sideline reporters. <laughs> most appearances within a first quarter. Congratulations to Craig. Farishow again off a pass from James Lugowski with the layup. See, when you have so much attention played to LeBron James, it's going to open up areas. And, and Cleveland is very active cutting. That time, Z gets the offensive rebound and the put back. Lewis trying to back his way, flips it back to Kirkaloo. As it slapped away, Ogowskis on the floor, came up with the steal. James met by Austin. Whoa, threw a bullet that nearly hit Marajal in the head. Incidentally, the official time of the delay, 8 minutes, 27 seconds. Here's West for three. Hit them from the left side of the circle and now the right. Well, he is just, he's playing at a tremendous level right now. So confident offensively. Ball deflected out. LeBron nearly landing in your lap. Well, see what happens is when you have Austin on LeBron, you've got a mismatch. So now all of a sudden the floor gets tilted defensively. And what Cleveland does, they do a great job of screening and switching that ball. Here's another knockaway. Good hands by the Cavs. West for three. Chased down by Varajan. So the Cavaliers have come out with a burst following that long layoff. Elgelskis. Rebounded by Turgler. This is the way the Magic came out against the Celtics in seven in Boston. Turgler way off. Rebound James. LeBron just looking to set people up. LeBron on the drive. That's LeBron though in the open court more. That's what I talked about the Magic transition defense. If they let him get that deep at the rim all night, they're going to be in serious trouble. That was his first shot attempt. A double turbulent. Lee for three. And deflected out last touch by Turgaloo. Oh, they're just so active right now, Cleveland. They are locked in, getting to three-point shooters. Just they, they, they right now have a tremendous focus defensively. Cavaliers have a 14-4 lead. Turgaloo trying to face guard James. LeBron comes up short and one handed by Howard. There's Howard spinning his way. Nice move. Went to the left hand. See what, what he's done. He has a nice little counter move. When he comes to the lane that way and you get on that shoulder, he'll spin back. And he's developed that nice little left hand hook shot. And Mark, when he becomes a shot maker, you won't be able to guard him because he is so powerful. Mo well, Williams oh. gets the roll. Dwight Howard did have difficulties with that, that hook against the Celtics because Kendrick Perkins played him so well. Played him, I thought, to a standstill at, at times because he's such a powerful guy. And then uh, Howard came out strong in games uh, six and seven. Here's Austin. He was looking for a contact call on Bowersow. on the spin. Will that count? Yes, it counts. And the foul. It's a goal, Ken. Mo Williams ready to argue, and Ken Maurer said, no, I said it's a goal, Ken. Well, this is the Mo Williams that uh, Mike Brown and these Cleveland fans wanted to see. 
Did not play great basketball in the first two rounds. He was brilliant in the regular season. And he's the number two scorer on this team behind LeBron James, giving him a legitimate second score at almost 18 a game in uh, the regular season. Uh, but Marv, he has not been as sharp offensively the first two playoff series. Tonight off to a nice start. He had a little floater in the lane now to three-point play. He says not, not a problem, and Mike Brown said the same, but he is playing through that injured left shoulder, which may have had an effect in the postseason. Here's Lewis, played well by Varajal. Ogalskis with the rebound. James going right at Howard, keeping it alive. And now handled by Lewis. That's what Dwight Howard brings to this Magic team. He's one guy that can really defend at the, the uh, rim against the LeBron James because he has the strength to take that hit. Oh, what a move by Dwight Howard. You see, Z does not have the foot speed. And you talked about it, Mark. One of the things Kendrick Perkins did, he got his body on him and he bodied up against him. What you're seeing Z do is he's giving him space. And so the quickness now really works in Howard's favor. It's Williams for the teardrop. Alston pushing it. Three on two for the Magic. Alston is open for three. Yes. Great for Alston who had a strong game seven. Up in Boston, 15 points, three threes, four assists. And that shot leads to a Cavalier timeout. Well, Dwight Howard, look at, look at the space he's got. He just faces up that little quick jab step he goes to that left hand again and this is where the concerns of Mike Brown are those open threes in transition Orlando is a tough mental team do with Cleveland is try to keep LeBron out of the paint and uh, you know once you do that you don't allow him to be able to get to the basket and dunk the ball or find other guys for wide open shots and I think we all make a, a great effort of making sure we you know close the paint off you know but playing against a great player like lebron you know uh you don't want him to get going well i think what you've seen here early in the game is they've done a pretty good job when lebron has tried to drive only a couple times where the cleveland cavaliers have really hurt orlando marv is when he's caught the ball on the perimeter in that little area 15 to 18 feet away from the basket when they start scrambling defensively cleveland does a great job cutting they have 12 points in the paint here of the 19 early in this game and now mikhail petrus has uh, come on for orlando and he opens up uh, defending on the bottom with a beautiful skip pass to ilgowskis and lebron has opened up as a playmaker that's his fourth assist Petrus will have a hot hand in game seven against the Celtics, knocks down a three. That three-point shot is the great equalizer. You get hot three or four times down and you can get into a lead very quickly. Back-to-back -back threes by the uh, Orlando Magic. Petrus six of seven, and the night three of three from the three-point line of Gaskus came up short. Howard with the rebound of the 21-14. Cavalier lead as we come up on four minutes to play in the first. Howard rejected by Varejao, the save for Ogowskis. Here comes West going right at the lead. Oh, from behind, Howard with the rejection. And, and almost a replay of when you see the mask of Courtney Lee. Remember, Dwight Howard came down on him and, and crushed his sinus. He was out with the surgery. Watch here, it almost happens again. This time he gets him in the back of the head. Courtney Lee goes, that's my own teammate. But that's what uh, Dwight Howard will do. He will track you down on the break with that speed and quickness. LeBron does the same thing. Blocks a lot of shots from behind in the open court. Right, Courtney Lee finally getting back into the starting line of James. Rejected. That will count. It's a goal set on Howard and for LeBron his first field goal. Let's check in with Craig. Well, Marv, just prior to that last time out, a piece of a bolt was found underneath one of the baskets of Bennett Salvatore, the crew chief, stopped the game, went over and talked to the officials from the arena. They went up and made sure that all the cameras were locked down tight so nothing would happen, nothing would come down later. But they did find a piece of bolt on the court. Uh, for those who may have just joined us, we had an eight, eight and a half minute delay at the start of the game. A tip by Ogowskis, because following a uh, dunk by Howard, the 24 seconds left on the top of the backboard. The game falling down to the floor. And 
the 24 second clocks have been placed on the baseline as Howard is fouled. Don Barrage, yeah, that's his first. Well, the concerns of Stan Van Gundy right now defensively have to be the fact that Cleveland's guards, LeBron, Delonte West, Mo Williams, are getting in the paint. And if they don't score, even getting that ball up at the rim, the second chance opportunity, that's eight second chance points now here for the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. And uh, Zagrudis Ogowskis is a guy, he's such a rhythm player. Normally he has to work himself into a series. He struggled in that Atlanta series, 5 of 15 in the first two games. 12 of 22 the last two he got his shooting but here he's getting out layups he's got three layups in this game tip in so he's getting into a nice rhythm just by being active Anthony Johnson has come on for the Magic Wally Serbiak for Mo Williams Petrus got the step on Serbiak here's Gaskis with the rebound so West and Serbiak in the backcourt James Gaskis and Farajal are up for his James for three yes That's the scary part. LeBron James has got all his teammates involved with his passing. He has come out and moved the ball. He has four assists here early, and you know he's going to get his points. And this is uh, one of those guys that can throw up a triple double at any time. Here's LeBron James with a backcourt foul. LeBron is actually upset with himself. He did not want to make that kind of contact, and he picks up his first. It's a 7-0 run for the Cavaliers. Now Tony Batie has come on. Dwight Howard will get a uh, No, Howard is still on the floor up front with Batie. They'll go with the Twin Towers and Howard with the running hook. I think Zagunas uh, Ogalskis was looking for his help that time. Nobody got down there quick enough. If you're going to put the uh, make him come to the middle, then somebody's got to dig down when he's on that dribble and disrupt his timing. 28-16, Cleveland, West off balance, smashed by Howard. Here's Lewis. Foul is on Serbiak, a blocking foul. 13 foul on the Cavs. See, that's where Richard Lewis can do his damage against Cleveland because you're asking Anderson Verge out to play him. And his instincts are go to the offensive board. So he gets caught underneath the basket. Richard Lewis runs out. Wally Zerbiak is slow getting there. I don't think the people here in Cleveland no. like the call, but uh, you see the uh, game seven that he had against the Celtics. But you know, Marvin, he was great. He was in the suspension of Dwight Howard in game six against Philadelphia. They put him in the post. And they don't post him much with Dwight Howard, but in that game, they put him in the post, and he was terrific down there. Well, you can vote for which player you want to watch. Get enhanced coverage of the Eastern Conference Finals on TNT. Overtime Extra presented by Axe Only on NBA.com. Just under two minutes to play in this first quarter. A 28-17 lead for the Cavaliers. West able to keep the dribble alive. West with the lead pass for Joe Smith, who just checked in. Comes to Serbiak, his three off the mark. There's Lewis, rejected by Smith. Kept alive by West, three on one develops. James with the stop. Standing ovation for LeBron James, who has put his team in front, 37 teams. Well, a great block by Joe Smith. That's defense creating offense. Getting out of the open court. What a great play by Joe Smith. Howard triple team rejected by James. Howard questions why no foul. James for three. Yes! What a display being put out here by LeBron James. At first, looking to set teammates up, and he has come out. He's hit his last four shots, including two from downtown. And that sensational stuff. So James with 10 points, four assists, and the Cavs have opened up a 33-17 lead. Well, the defense is the calling card for this Cleveland Cavalier team. They have great defensive rotation, good shot blocking, 
This is what happens when LeBron James gets the open court, gets into the paint. And then LeBron, remember, he's helping off the weak side. He comes over and gets a shot block. And then he's going to get up. Nobody talking here defensively. He walks right into the three. Lamar, we talked about how he started out the game looking to pass, how quickly he gets to 10 points, already four assists. Don't underestimate the motor, the passion, and the energy that this guy brings and how his team feeds off it every single night. The NBA's MVP, all NBA first team. He missed his first three shots over the opening eight minutes. The last three minutes, he is four for four, including the two from downtown. Five seconds left in the first. Petrus had a slap away. Another Cavalier deflection. James for three. Layoff. And handled by Turgulov. Petrus able to get down court. James tried to get him from behind. LeBron loves that chase down. Where yes, he's he does. Able to catch people from behind. And, and Mikel Petrus sort of had a, the rear view mirror working there. He knew that LeBron was coming and he went strong to the rim. Had he laid this ball up, LeBron would have blocked it. But this is a smart play from Mikel Petrus here. He goes up and sits as LeBron is behind him. Doesn't try to do anything fancy. Just finishes it and uh, gets the easy two. Mike Brown now goes with Ben Wallace. Joe Smith and LeBron James up front. Wallace makes his first appearance. West rebounded by Johnson. Final seconds of the first. Petrus for three. Strong start for the Cavaliers. They shoot 13 for 28. They out rebound the Magic 15 to 12. LeBron James, 10 points, all coming for the last four minutes. When we come back, Craig with Magic head coach Stan Van Gundy. We're back at the queue in Cleveland. And aerial coverage being provided by Goodyear. New fuel max tires help tires help you get there on less gas. Calculate your savings at GoodyearTires.com. And just moments ago, Craig Sager talked with Orlando head coach Stan Van Gundy. Well, Coach, you're concerned with the quality of shots your team was getting. You're shooting 35% in the first quarter. What type of shots are you getting? Well, that isn't the problem. The problem is at the other end. They got 33 points. All right, 12 of their first 19 were in the paint. We're playing no defense, and we're a little bit back on our heels at both ends. I didn't like the way we played at all. They really jumped us. We did not hold our poise. We did not defend, and we got to turn it around here quickly. LeBron started to take over the last part of that first quarter at four of his last five. What do you do against him? Well, I don't know, but again, we're giving him too many layups. It's not him. It's not one guy. It's nothing one specific thing. We're just not playing right now. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mark. All right, Craig, and 33 points for the uh, Cavaliers equals their playoff high for any quarter. Ben Wallace called on the foul. Hey, Mark, what this great start does for Cleveland, it allows their bench now to come in and play. The bench has not been very potent here in the playoffs. I think Mike Brown would like to see this kind of activity here. Off the steal, West take home. So the Cavs go to the trap. And for Orlando, it's turnover number four. Howard getting deep inside. Went right at Wallace. 35-21 Cavaliers as the second quarter gets underway. Marv Albert with Doug Collins and, and Craig Sager. It's game one of this best of seven Eastern Conference final series. Game two here on Friday night. Here's Smith. Joe Smith. Back with the Cavaliers, he was signed after Smith asked for and was granted his release by Oklahoma City. The Cavs originally had sent uh, Smith to the Thunder as uh, part of a three-way deal that uh, brought Mo Williams to Cleveland. Here's the team with his first shot. Wallace rebounds. Williams. And by the team. Well, this guy right here, Hito Turkulu, has got to get going. He is uh, throwing up no field goal made here early. Neither has. 
Tony Petit. Richard Lewis, so those two guys, key guys, 0 of 5 to get started. The only guy really playing offensively right now is Dwight Howard. He's 6 of 8 with 12 points. The rest of the team is really struggling. And uh, Tony Batti is a guy that, uh, well, they really missed him last year. He had that injury and was out. And he gives them another big guy off the bench, gives them a versatile player to play a couple positions, very smart. And uh, they, they need him to play well. So Batti with the bucket, and he was fouled by Smith. Tony Batti in his fifth year with the Magic had that torn rotator cuff, as you mentioned, last season in the left shoulder. One time member of the, the Boston Celtics, so limited action in the series against Boston. Two minutes gone by in the second. Shot clock to five. Williams gets Williams off to the good start. He has seven points. So when you watch Cleveland, one of the things that really stands out, Marv, is uh, they're a much better offensive team they were two years ago when they went to the NBA Finals. Guys can get their shots off the dribble, play pick and roll. Once again, we see that jump hook by Dwight Howard. But, but it's almost what uh, Cleveland is doing it without coming out and saying it is we're going to give you two points in the paint to take away that three point shooting and make the Dwight Howard throw up a huge game and try to shut out Turk and Rashard Lewis and that's what they've done here early in this game. Cavaliers averaged 100 points a game during the regular season but what is most impressive they shot 47 percent which was among the leaders in the NBA. Howard is seven of nine for the field 14 points. Going right at Smith, picks up the offensive foul. He was unhappy. He thought that Smith was hand checking him. And then Howard with the aggressive move, and he's called for the foul. Well, Joe Smith, a couple times, they've been locked up on rebounds. And Joe Smith has tried to do a great job of just face guarding him. That time, Dwight Howard, I think you got there right that uh, mark, and he just got frustrated there and just lowered his shoulder and got the offensive foul. Howard picks up his first personal. Smith eluding the team. Joe Smith showing the touch. Well, that guy can make shots. That's one of the reasons why they picked him up. He was a great guy in the locker room, but he fits beautifully with this team because of that four spot. He can step out and shoot the ball with all those double teams and pick and roll. Then LeBron James likes to run with him. Foul is on Smith for the block on Turgaloo. So the Cavs doing a nice job, although LeBron James sitting it out here at the start of the second quarter. Cavaliers up by 15. We'll be back to Cleveland, Ohio, right after this. Listen, we're one quarter into this series. Just play. You're not going to get 14 points back in the next five minutes. You're going to get it possession by possession. Just play the next possession. But our effort has got to pick up a lot here. We got to run back. But well, you, you see Stan Van Gundy talking to his team about the energy. Mark, where you see it is Orla uh, Orlando's force, no turnovers. I mean, Cleveland is playing, shooting 50% from the floor. They're moving the ball. They're getting points in the paint. And all the things we talked about, a great start for Cleveland. They've gotten off to that. They're defending the three. LeBron has his imprint on this game early. So right now, all the things we talked about early are tilted well in favor of Cleveland. That's why they lead by 15. It's Howard off the double team and nearly took the backboard down. Well, you can just see he gets in that paint. He's so strong. And if he gets himself underneath that rim, you're not going to be able to defend him. Howard 8 for 10 he has 16 points. Williams trying to find the pick. Here's Williams. Rebounded by Howard. Anthony Johnson now at the point. Johnson and Petrus at the guard. Johnson got the hop. Four straight points following that uh, timeout for the Magic. It's an 11 point Cavalier lead. Job by Johnson nearly took the dribble away from West. Shot clock to five. Once again, Johnson 
Knocks it aside, West with the recovery, and just fires one up. Knew the shot clock was running down, and it is a, a violation. Now, that's a definition of a bad <laughs> possession yes. right there. That, that's called over-dribbling, and this is when Cleveland gets themselves in trouble. If they start standing and over-dribbling, they get caught with a shot clock against them, and the bad possession that time that uh, cost them a 24-second violation. Only the first turnover by the Cavaliers. Good job defensively by Anthony Johnson. Is Howard getting inside and call for steps. Offensive, uh, offensive foul. foul. It's an offensive foul on Howard. That's his second. Well, you expect Dwight Howard to get fouled, but you expect him to be on the defensive end trying to defend the rim. And you can see, I guess they just said he lowered his shoulder, but that's two fouls on him, Mark. Both of them offensive. He, he needs to be able to keep his fouls to where he can guard that rim because all of a sudden you get LeBron in the game, these guys start talking, uh, attacking the basket. He's going to be very vulnerable to pick up that third. LeBron James back, Anderson Barish out, getting set to make his return. Serbia. Wallace tipping it over to James. Try to slip it back. He did, and a foul. Smith will hit to the line. Well, LeBron has done a great job passing. We just saw it in the last possession, and the Joe Smith is going to shoot free throws. Verjao moving, and you see the double team leaves Delonte West open for a three. You see LeBron sort of like a quarterback directing traffic. Another three by Delonte West, who got off to a great start. He has eight points in the game, and LeBron got all of his teammates involved. And you look up, but he already has ten points and four assists. Still almost seven minutes to go. So. That's a scary part about LeBron is he has the ability, Mark. We saw that quick surge where he had those 10 points. It seemed like at about a two and a half minute period of time. Foul was on, on Johnson. Smith just a 72 uh, percent free throw shooter. A reminder: National coverage of the NBA playoffs continues tomorrow on ESPN. It's Game Two of the Nuggets and the Lakers coverage beginning 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time with uh, the Lakers coming from behind to win it last night at the Staples. Friday, right here on TNT, we'll be back for game two between the Magic and the Cavs starting 8 o'clock Eastern time. And then Saturday on ABC game three, Lakers Nuggets at uh, 8 o'clock Eastern time. If Orlando's going to work themselves back into this game offensively, they've got to get Turkaloo and Richard Lewis going. These, these are two key guys. Marv, you did the game seven Boston when uh, Turkaloo was sensational with his shooting and his passing 12 assists in that ball game. Right now the defensive matchups have sort of flustered Orlando a little bit. They're not in sync at all offensively except when uh, Dwight Howard's going to work in the paint. 14 fouls now on the on the Cavaliers. Three for Alston who just uh, came on able to feed it to Marching Gortat who replaced Dwight Howard and Marching Gortat out of Poland. Rookie, uh, Actually, a second season hardly played last year. Second season in the uh, NBA, but has uh, played well in limited minutes uh, during the postseason. Here's James. And saved by Gortat. And lost his balance. Stepped out. But more just to follow up with Gortat. Early in the year, Dwight Howard on a West Coast road trip went out with an injury, missed three games, and, he, and Gortat stepped in and played exceptionally well, just as he did in game six against Philadelphia when Dwight Howard was suspended. So but don't go to sleep on Gortat. That guy can give them good minutes. The Bruno has returned. Williams and Serbiak in the backcourt. James Ogowskis and Barajal now up front for the Cavs. Here's Williams off balance three. And a foul is called as Barajal was pushed by Lewis. Guard Lewis called for his second. Just under six remaining. First half, the Cavaliers up by ten. All right, Doug, let's take a look at the action cam presented by Transformers. Revenge of the Fallen in theaters June 24th. Well, you love when your defense creates offense, and this is exactly what happened. Joe Smith with a great block on Richard Lewis. And look out when this guy gets in the air. That kind of power, and you 
feel the energy in this building when he takes off like that. I remember when I was coaching Michael Jordan, how many times he would make a play like that. The opposing team would take a timeout just to try to take the crowd out of the game. Because what it does is just to his teammates, how it lifts them. And Stan Van Gundy did just that during that spree right at the end of the first quarter. There's LeBron James with his first bucket of the second quarter. But LeBron started slowly looking for teammates, picked up four assists, and then came out hit four straight shots, including two three-pointers. And that devastating dunk is Lewis. And Richard Lewis with his first field goal. I would like to see him do more of that. I think sometimes he settles too much for the three. I think he has the ability to put the ball on the floor. I'd love to see him get to the free throw line more often. They clear it out as James works on Petrus and then finds Williams. Yogowskis to the rim! That was on our slow motion cam. <laughs> A good first half for Zadrinis. Yogowskis, four of six, eight points, seven rebounds. Here's Turgano. And you know Turgano in the scoring column. That's his first bucket. Well, as well as Cleveland has played, they're only up 10 in this game. If you think if you're Orlando, if you could get this down to about six going into half with a surge that Cleveland hit you with to start this game, you would be in very good position. Cavaliers have led by as many as 16. Once again, James working on Petrus. Here's James. Makes the turn and score. It's impossible to stop. Well, he's so strong, he just rolls right off of you. I remember I used to play Earl Monroe. He used to love to feel your body yes. so he could spin off of you. That's exactly what uh, LeBron did that time. Petrus bodied up and he just rolled right off him and got the easy basket. We're taught not able to handle it's deflected out last touch by the uh, Cavaliers. I would think after playing Earl the Pro, you'd be flinching after the game. Well, you know, you almost tried to give Earl space because he wanted to feel where you were, and then he would play right. off of your body. And you could see LeBron here. He gets his body up against him, and now he just sort of steps through it. And if you're going to double team him, you've got to close that double team. And Gartat did a bad job that time of coming over and double teaming. And you got to make LeBron pass that ball. Looks like the big kid just leveled Verja on a pick. There's Petrus. Well, Barajal's hurt. And a foul is called. It's on Ilgowskis. Barajal took a hit in his throat. Well, I could see this right here in front of us. You're going to see the screen right here. Right as they check on Anderson, uh, Barajal will take a break. Back to the queue in a moment. Back now to take a look, and you see Barajal back on his feet. He took that shot from Miguel Petrus. And uh, now a full timeout has been taken. 48-36, Cavaliers just under four left first half. Let's take a look at the magic touch presented by Nikon Cool Fix S230. Well, the L.A. Clippers able to get the number one pick of the lottery that took place last night as they vaulted over Washington and Sacramento to land the number one pick in the, in the draft lottery. Are we looking at Blake Griffin in a Clipper uniform? Well, he's the best player, so I would assume that they would have to look long and hard at him. But uh, you can think if that Clipper team could get healthy. They have talent on that team, Marv. They, they just had a disastrous year with injuries and all that went on, but they've got talent. There's 19 wins for the uh, Clippers this past season. For more on the lottery, let's go to Craig.
Well, Marv, during the past two series out west, I was covering the Lakers against both Utah and Houston, and both of those teams practiced at the L.A. Clippers practice facility. I saw them bring in numerous players, working them out for the draft. Last night, after they got the number one pick, I called Joe Safety, their PR director, and he said they were preparing in case they did not get the number one draft. But now that they have, they're bringing in nobody else. They're going to relax for the next six weeks until they officially make Blake Griffin the number one pick on June 25th. That's who they had in mind all along, but they're doing very diligent work in case they did not get that number one pick. All right, the uh, L.A. Clippers with that injury hit season and uh, chemistry not not the best with uh, the group that they had. But uh, Blake Griffin has a beautiful backdoor pass from Williams to James. It's a 50 38 lead for the, for the Cavaliers. But uh, Blake Griffin could uh, certainly help to change that uh, chemistry in a quick uniform. Marv, I love those kind of plays out of timeouts. When you're a coach and you can steal baskets out of timeouts, Petrus off the lead pass cuts it back to 10. Well, he has seven points, and he was a big catalyst in that 11 0 run the other night in the fourth quarter of game seven. He had five of those 11 points, and it was sensational. He had 17 points off the bench for the Orlando Magic. There's James on the spin. Once again, going right at Petrus. The basket counts and a foul. See, Dwight Howard has two fouls. So we'll see what happens on this play. But if they're going to let LeBron James isolate one dribble away from the basket, that's one dribble. And that's Dwight Howard. So I talked about it before, Marv. He had two offensive fouls. And on that one, it's almost like he was trying to get out of the way. So three very uh, ticky-tacky fouls on Dwight Howard. And LeBron James talking to Dwight Howard. Remember, those two guys were teammates on the Olympic team this summer and won gold medals together. And that's three on Howard. Gorton will make his return. So Howard will sit down with the 18 points, 8 of 11 from the field, 6 rebounds, 12 point Cavalier lead. 3 3 to go, first half. Still on my friends. Marv Albert with Doug Collins, Craig Sager back at Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland. And it's a 12 point lead for the the Cavaliers, we do have a family affair in terms of the uh, coaching staff. It's Mike Malone, an assistant on Mike Brown's staff. And uh, over on the other bench, a longtime NBA assistant and one time head coach Brendan Malone on the staff of, of Stan Van Gundy. That's a tough dynamic. I can't imagine my son Chris coaching one team and me on the other. Uh, I read an article today, they talked about uh, how these two guys, how much they love each other, but there's not going to be a lot of dialogue between these two guys over the next uh, 10, 12 days. Uh, Mike Malone does a lot, nice job with the defensive uh, side of the ball. And you got John Kuster does a lot of the stuff with the offense. So uh, I think Mike Brown is very much like an NFL coach in a lot of ways. He's, uh, he's got two guys that really help him and gives him a lot of latitude. And you got to be very, very secure in your position to give your assistants that kind of, uh, you know, authority in those huddles. You don't see it as much in the NBA where guys delegate right. exactly. authority. Your son Chris, an assistant on Mike Krzyzewski's staff uh, at Duke. But could you, as Turgula was able to knock it down, that's a, a two-point. If you guys were coaching against each other, could you go a week, a week and a half without <laughs> talking at all? It, it would be hard, but I, I know who his mother would be for. It wouldn't be me. Yes. <laughs> There's Williams wide open for three. Long rebound handled by James. Looking for a foul as Lee try to knock it aside. Williams again from downtown. Good job by Lewis on a box out against uh, Ilgowskis. There's Lewis. Nowhere to go. It's at the cross court. A bad pass. Picked off by West. Watch two minutes. Here the comes LeBron. And he threw the foul, went at your top. So James to the line. He's like a runaway freight train in the open court. And once he gets ahead of steam up, Mark, we talked about it. You know, you talk about guys like Tony Parker in this league, guys who are so fast, Chris Paul. But I'm telling you, once LeBron gets to full speed, I don't know if there's anybody 
that has any more speed in the NBA. And then you put 260 pounds and that kind of power, when he gets around that lane area, he's either going to finish or get fouled. 20 points in this first half for LeBron James. If you get taken, they take back. Timothy Hutton and his team are back in TNT's smash hit Leverage. Don't miss the new season premiere of Leverage this July only on TNT. Remember that, Doug. If you get taken, they take back. I'm just reading a card here. <laughs> 12 point lead for the Cavs. Turgaloo, and he was blocked. So Hito Turgaloo will go to the line. Foul committed by Mo Williams. See, Hito Turgaloo really plays so much as a point guard on this team. And you'd say, well, with Delonte West on him, why, why wouldn't you post him up? Well, because really, he's not comfortable that much down in the post. And you can see what a barometer he is for this team. We talked about game seven, how great he was against Boston. Got him off to a great start, and then they had a great finish. Uh, they had 35 points in the fourth quarter of that game. Looked like uh, Boston was going to make a little push. Rondo hit that jumper at the end of the quarter to make it five points. Everybody says, here goes the magic again. But they are tough, and when the, the, the chips got against them in that fourth quarter, they played great basketball. Probably their best quarter of basketball when they needed it the most to get to this uh, conference finals. They opened up with that 11-0 burst to put it away in the Turgaloo. Major factor. James has scored 10 of the Cavaliers' last 12 points. Now guarded by Lewis and shoots over him. Well, he's going to make that. You can't guard him. I mean, the guy gets in the post. I mean, he's going to drive. You've got to give him some space. You want him to be a two point jump shooter, but he's improved his shooting so much. Lewis, yes. You know, when you look back to when LeBron first entered the NBA six years ago, and there were many questions about that outside shot. Questions that are not asked anymore. Well, because he's here three hours and a half before the game with Chris Jen shooting in the dark. It doesn't happen by accident, you know, when he makes these kind of shots right here. You know, it's, it's called a lot of work. Marge, you were just in Boston. You saw Ray Allen. We've seen Larry Bird through the years. These guys who shoot the ball, they do it because they work on it every single day. There's Alston. But obviously, it, it's a combination of having the skill and working at it because you can get a guy who can't shoot going right. to the gym right for three hours. It's not going to really ha not going to help. But we know what he's doing now. His technique is so much better. And he practices the same shots all the time. I thought as a young player, his attention to detail wasn't great. Now his attention to detail is terrific. Playing the clock down. James again. He has scored 16 points in the last five and a half minutes. 26 in all. Gortat with one second remaining. Good job by Alston who was under pressure, but got the ball to Gortat. And here's Mo Williams firing one. And score! Well, look at it. It appeared he got it off. From the back court, Mo Williams. See, really, they were just trading three for two on that play. They gave the dunk to Gortat. How many times do you think he and LeBron, after practice, throw up these kind of shots? Having fun. You know who used to be so good at that? Tim Hardaway was so good at those kind of shots. A lot of guys won't even take that shot because if you miss it, it counts as a missed field goal. But look at LeBron, the smile, and uh, that's a great high going in for Cleveland after giving up a dunk to Gortat. So it is obviously a three-point play. The officials checking the videotape. It is a 63-48 lead for the Cavaliers. Let's go to Craig. Assist, then you scored 16 in the last 18 points until Mo Williams hit that three. How do you pick and choose when you score and when you pass? Uh, you just see how the defense reacts, man. They started off double teaming in the post, and Andy got a layup, Andy got a foul, Delonte got two threes, and then they started letting me play a little bit one on one. So uh, that's when my opportunity is to be a little bit more aggressive. We saw you at practice yesterday. You're there an hour and a half before, an hour and a half afterwards. But then you do the LeBron trick shots with Mo Williams. You do shots like that. Did that surprise you? Made that uh, one? Mo missed. Mo missed some of the easy threes he's ever missed in his life. 
and then he make that one. Uh, don't make sense, but uh, we'll take it. <laughs> All right, well, the basket was ruled good, and that extends Cleveland's lead at intermission. And we come back, we'll have the T-Mobile halftime report from right here in Cleveland. A.J., Kenny, Charles, and Reggie Miller from Cleveland. It's a runaway. T-Mobile halftime report here from uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. The Cavaliers with a 63 to 48 lead as they uh, try to fix the shot clock. We had a major shot clock violation one minute into the game when Dwight Howard nearly pulled the thing down. That and the, uh, the goal stayed intact. <laughs> However, the shot clock I'm wondering if Charles has ever done this. Charles, have you, have you ever brought down the 24-second clock or the, like how, how Shaq I've, brought down the whole thing? Broke the I, back I, no, I've actually broke two backboards in my life. Pretty impressive by Dwight Howard right there. Caused about an eight-and-a-half-minute delay. That's a great look at it right there. And uh, then they went with the floor mount shot clocks for the duration of the first half. So they are working on that even as we speak. And that did bring back memories of Shaquille O'Neal. And Chef, you were there. I was. I got, out, out, I, I got out the way. <laughs> I was like the basket. Is mercy me. And so that all happened. Well, that happened a long time ago. But all that other stuff happened within the first minute of the game. And LeBron James was the last Cleveland Cavaliers starter to score in this game. Yet he sets a franchise playoff record for points and a half with 26 on 11 of 16 shooting. I have no idea if that has anything to do with your pictures, but I do want to hear what your pictures are of the first well, half. Well, not yet. That doesn't have anything to do with the pictures because it's more defensive, but it does happen to do what I call him the copycat killer, where he looks at Kobe Bryant. He saw Carmelo Anthony yesterday, and he's not going to let them outshine him, and he understands what this is all about. But the pictures is more of a defensive end because they put him on Ray for Austin, which really caused some matchup problems for the whole team for the Orlando Magic. They didn't really have a good understanding of how to plan of attack. And because Turkoglu is normally a three-point shooter, all of a sudden he's taken off the three-point line because he thinks that you can post this guy up. And when you post him up, all of a sudden he becomes the facilitator instead of the finisher, and Courtney Nee becomes the finisher, and that doesn't just work. And I think overall they just didn't have a great understanding of how to attack the defense. And all of a sudden Ray for Austin has LeBron on him, and he's going to go by size to meet size. I don't think he's accustomed to doing those things. So that matchup change for Cleveland actually helped, and it really hindered the Orlando Magic. What jumps out at you from the first 24? Well, I thought Orlando just couldn't make a shot. They got off to a bad start. They got the game to settle down. But I think they didn't shoot a good percentage. I think they got to be, number one, they got to play at a much faster pace. But also, uh, they got to be just more aggressive. When you when they're going to use all those cross mass up matchups, there's going to be huge disadvantages. Uh, uh, Rashard Lewis and Turgaloo, they've got to be more aggressive. They're going to be the key. But they're going to let Dwight Howard basically play one-on-one. -on -one. But Turgaloo and Rashard Lewis, they got matchup issues. They should kill those little guys that's guarding them. Cleveland Cavaliers got some dynamic plays, especially late in the first quarter from uh, Joe Smith and from LeBron James that really got this place going. It got is their defense creating easy offense here? Well, to me in this series, I think Cleveland has the better bench. And Joe Smith, I think the eight full days off really has benefited him because of his age but where Cleveland has the advantage and you would thought Orlando was the three-point shooting coming in Orlando was number two in three-point shot attempts and three-point shots made during this season tonight they're only two of seven while Cleveland is five of twelve that's a plus nine for the Cleveland Cavaliers from what is supposed to be the Orlando Magic strength and you look at Chuck talked about Tito Turkoglu and Rashard Lewis both only have five field goal attempts. There's no way they are going to beat the Cleveland Cavaliers if both of those guys are only taking five field goals in the first half. I well, totally agree. Well, first of all, what, what I misspoke earlier, they got big guys guarding them. They're so used to standing out there shooting threes. All they got to do is put the ball down and go at the basket. But they're playing a little... Uh, when you have big guys switching out on them, I don't understand. You just got to be aggressive. I would never let a big guy guard me if I was considered a small forward and able to put the ball on the floor. And, and Rafer Alton has to be more aggressive. He's somewhat intimidated because he sees LeBron, but LeBron James should not be able to keep him in front of him. 
LeBron James, 26 points in the first half on 11 of 16. Dwight Howard, 18 points on 8 of 11. And the Cleveland Cavaliers, who have not lost in this building in the postseason, in fact, haven't lost a postseason game, lead it 63 to 48 at the break. And Mo Williams with a lightning bolt in the closing tip of the first half. This is why you and always this. take this shot and you don't worry about your average and your percentages because when it goes in, it gets you to the next level. They're up by 15 and we'll be back. Welcome to the T-Mobile Halftime Report. Live from the site of the Eastern Conference Finals, T-Mobile, official telecommunications partner of the NBA. Back around the T-Mobile Halftime Report. Hey, good work by the crew here at the queue because they have got the shot clock back up on that goal after uh, Dwight Howard caused it to fall one minute into the game. And so things back to normal, or as normal as they usually are here on the show, uh, in game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. Meantime, tomorrow night on ESPN, the Nuggets and Lakers playing game two of the Western Conference Final. Those two guys were magnificent in the opener. Kobe Bryant with 40, Mello with 39 as the Lakers won by two. And on Friday night, right back here in Cleveland, LeBron James and the Cavs hosting Dwight Howard and the Magic in game two of the Eastern Conference Finals. Look who's in the house here. Oh, oh one of the greatest ever. Oh, uh, greatest ever. Oh, my goodness. Jim Brown gracing us with his presence here for game one, a Cleveland legend, to say the least. Hey, time for a T-Mobile close-up. Who's he going to do? Good guess, LeBron James. Yeah. I mean, 26 points in the first half. This team is just playing at an incredible pace and an incredible chemistry and an incredible belief. 39-2 and two in the regular season, trying to make it 5-0 and oh at home, and now we know exactly why the crew here at the queue was able to get things repaired so quickly. Look at, hey, look at Charles doing the work you, man. up there, man. I'm a jack of all <laughs> trees. You're a jack. <laughs> just just yanking on the after. board got it done. Go add something else, Rich, after the jack. Add your baby. He's a jack, all right. You've been watching the T-Mobile Halftime Report live from the site of the Eastern Conference Finals. Get even closer to the game with T-Mobile Close-Up. See more playoff action from special camera angles available only on the T-Mobile G1. Get it now at T-Mobile.com slash NBA. Welcome back to Quicken Loans Arena, Cleveland, Ohio. The Cleveland Cavaliers who just roared through the first two rounds of the playoffs against Detroit and Atlanta have done the same here in the first half. They have a 15-point advantage on the magic of this game one of the Eastern Conference Final. Marv Albert, Doug Collins, and Craig Sager. And look at these numbers on LeBron. He played 19 minutes in the first half. First eight minutes, Doug, 0 for 3. Did have four assists. His last 11 minutes, 11 of 13, 26 points, doing it in every conceivable way, showing the entire repertoire. In the first half, it was a combination of LeBron and Mo Williams. Well, these two guys have a great chemistry with one another, and they know each other are all the time on the floor. But when you get LeBron out in the open court and you give him these kind of baskets, and that jump shot, that rim just sort of opens up for him. A lot of isolation here. They allow him to step through and score. And you see that he and uh, Mo Williams combined for 36 points. That was a beautiful play. They set up out of the uh, timeout, the little backdoor. John Kuster from North Carolina. That's a little North Carolina backdoor. And then here is Mo Williams throwing up the three. You heard LeBron say at halftime he missed two or three of the easiest threes he's had. And then uh, throws in that long one. But uh, you see the points. Uh, eight in the paint. So four field goals in the paint. Gets two free throws. Mid-range games. He hits five, three, uh, five jumpers and then two threes. So he mixes it up 26 points. More importantly, Marv, you know, I'm, I'm big on that points per shot. You keep a great player to one point per shot, you're doing a great job. 1.6, that goes sort of hand in hand with what he did in the first two series. He has just been unstoppable. 
A look at the halftime stats. Orlando, although down by 15, shooting 51%, the same as the Cavaliers, but the Cavs have taken away the three-point shot. A prolific weapon during the regular season for Orlando. Look at the turnovers. Eight by the Magic, just one for Cleveland. Second chance points, points off turnovers, all Cavaliers in those departments. Let's check it with Craig. Well, during that halftime intermission, then you imagine Patrick Stirl and his crew made sure that the basket was sturdy. They replaced the bracket holding the shot clock, make sure the shot clock was functioning. Then they'd remove the side shot clocks from the court. One different Sports Illustrated will not have its still camera, nor will we have our Robo Fletcher camera. They did not have time to safely put these back, which means our producer, director, Scooter Wheelow, have one less toy to play with in the second half. A side note, Dwight Howard ordinary after picking up his third foul. He told me a second to go. He's going to try to bring down the shot clock together under the court in this half. Mark. I don't know. Dwight did a lot of damage and then went around the court apologizing to people saying sorry it was it was my fault. It was that powerful dunk that uh, led to the collapse of the 24 second shot clock on top of the backboard and we had an eight and a half minute Delay. Kind of a disjointed yes. first half. Yeah, very much. No rhythm in that game and uh, foul trouble for uh, Dwight Howard and uh, just never got in any kind of sync. The Orlando Magic. Let's see if they come out more importantly here in the second half defensively. They were very soft defensively in that first half. Shot clock down to five. Here's Lewis and the tip by Howard. Boy, and Dwight has to be careful. He's playing with the three fouls. Howard with 18 points on eight. Uh, make that nine of 12 from the field, now 20 points for Howard. Well, you can see what uh, Cleveland is doing. They're making Howard try to take contested shoot. Nice little uh, play here that uh, West cannot finish. But they are committed to chasing Orlando off that three-point line. Turgler with uh, Howard and Lewis up front. Alston and Lee in the backcourt. Courtney Lee, the, the rookie out of Western Kentucky, back in the starting lineup, Stan Van Gundy going with J.J. Redick with Lee coming off the bench in the series against the uh, Celtics after that sinus cavity uh, fracture. And uh, J.J. Redick fouled as called as Odalskis holds Howard. J.J. Redick did not shoot well oh, after that opening game Celtics. against Boston. Had a good game result. six First against Philadelphia, foul. but did a nice job defensively against Ray Allen. Yeah, I talked to J.J. last night. He was talking about how, you know, his job was to just chase Ray Allen, and it really affected his offense. He was concentrating so much on his defense, and this is uh, Dwight Howard once again going with that little hook that he's credited Stan Van Gundy with teaching him with. You know, you, you asked Stan today before the game if uh, he was happy with a couple of those hook shots he took in Boston. You said <laughs> those had no chance to go in. <laughs> But he was facing uh, Kendrick Perkins, who was pushing him off the spot that he wanted to be on. And as a oh, result, uh, Dwight not able to have much success with the hook. But uh, here, no pressure at all from Ogalskis. He just doesn't have the quickness. So, so Howard knows if he faces him up, he can get to where he wants to get on the floor. And Cleveland does not want to help on him too much and then free up the three-point shooting. Knocked out of bounds by West. 13 on the shot clock, minute and a half gone by in this third quarter, and Orlando now within 11. They've trailed by as many as 16. Well, when you shoot the three the way Orlando does, I mean, that can go in a hurry, so Cleveland better not lose focus here defensively. Now, also a little screen and roll, making uh, LeBron James work on the defensive end. You heard our studio guys talk about Austin, Turkaloo, and Lewis, that they had to be much more aggressive here in this second half. The Cavalier lead is down to nine. James over Turgalo. Howard rejected. James getting it from the blind side, and a technical foul has been called. A technical foul on Dwight Howard. You see, that's why they want LeBron on Ray for Austin. They want him to roam and come off the weak side. Look where LeBron is. Comes off the weak side and blocks the shot. Remember now, he was runner-up for defensive player of the year behind Dwight Howard. No, 
I talked about coaching Michael Jordan before. We used to use Michael a lot like this when he was in Chicago, coming off the weak side and blocking shots. The one year when Michael was the defensive player of the year, he had over 100 block shots and over 200 steals. And so many of it came from his ability to help off the ball and bother big guys from behind when they don't see him coming. And LeBron, like Michael, has the freedom to roam and will come up with block shots. Nice play by Lee on the steal. And he's able to beat James, who is going for the block. That was impressive by Courtney Lee. Quick hands on the stuff to get that one by James. It's a 10-point lead for the Cavaliers. James, yes, he is on fire. 30 points for LeBron. He's at 13 of 18 for the field. Turgaloo for three. A loose ball foul call. It is on Varajal. Well, Dwight Howard, what, what Cleveland is trying to do, Mark, when that shot goes up, they're almost trying to face guard him and take him away from the uh, the rebound. And you used to do this with guys like Dennis Rodman, these guys, where you just say, look, I'm not going to get the rebound, but I'm not going to let him get it either. And uh, that time he got caught with holding the jersey of Dwight Howard, who was so active and quick. Uh, correction on the last foul, it was uh, Elgowskis, not Barajal. Lee gets alive by Howard. Try to trap Turgula, got it down low. Howard with a nice move, and James stepped away, did not want to commit the foul. Well, that time he felt LeBron in front of him. He just went over and powered that ball right through him. So Dwight Howard having a terrific offensive game at 24 points on only 15 shots. 11 of 15 for the field, eight rebounds. Varajal from James. And for Varajal, got off to the quick start thanks to LeBron James. Varajal cutting successfully. Another bucket for Varajal. Here's Alston. He's open. Alston for three. Well, that's, that's because three. LeBron James was underneath the basket, going to give help, not even guarding Ray for Alston in the corner. So if they're going to swing that ball. They're going to make the LeBron James pay for roaming around there defensively. Ilgowskis for three. He's been shooting the three this season with success. Orlando within nine. That pass intended for Howard. And a foul. It's on the Cavs. Foul on the Cavaliers, number 13, Delonte West. It is on Delonte West. 13 foul. Now look at LeBron James now. He's guarding Ray for Austin. He cut through the corner. Look where LeBron James is. He's almost at the restricted area. And so Alston is going to be wide open. And if he will knock down some of these shots, he will keep LeBron a lot more at home. And then you're going to see other guys get a chance to go to work offensively. That's th uh, three team fouls on the Cavaliers. I would try to bank it this time on the jump hook. 70 to 61, Cleveland. They've led by as many as 16. They've had the double digit lead most of the way. And uh, James was hit by Turgaloo. Cavaliers at home during the regular season, 39 and 2. Best home record in the, the NBA. The two losses to the Lakers, to Philadelphia. One point, they won 23 straight at home. They have gone 4 and 0 oh here at the queue in the postseason. The Boston Celtics of 85-86 went 40 and 1. That was the the all-time record that the the Cavaliers were chasing. Well, look at 86-87, the, the year after that, wasn't it? The year after that, they go 39 and 2. So not a bad record to go 79 and 3 at home in two years. I would say that's taking care of the home court. And a home court that has been uh, selling out better than 20,000. On hand once again, they've sold out 42 of their 45 home games, including the, the postseason. And the city of Cleveland has not 
been able to celebrate a sports championship since the 1964 Cleveland Browns. Here in Cleveland, they're hoping the uh, Cavaliers end the drought. It's been 45 years. You see the great running back from the Cleveland Browns, Jim Brown, sitting down here. Marvin and I had a chance to say hi to him before yep. the game with Syracuse alum, you guys. All the Famer are sitting uh, courtside. Shot clock is down to three. Here's Williams. And the ball back to Orlando. There is Jim Brown. Six and a half remaining in this third quarter. Lewis, yes. Don't look now. It's a seven-point game. So all that great energy from Cleveland to get this game started. They had Orlando on their heels. It's a different Orlando Magic team. I think you're seeing some of that toughness that I talked about. I think everybody thinks of this three-point shooting team. This team really is at their best when they got a chip on their shoulder and the odds are against them. And a defensive three-second violation. Defensive three Meanwhile, second Orlando has outscored Cleveland 15-7 here at the start of the third. I like this, though, getting Richard oh, Lewis on the move. You heard Charles Barkley talk at, at halftime about when you play a big guy like a Berejau on Richard Lewis, if he keeps him on the move and doesn't stand, he can drive that ball past him, catch and shoot like he did, uh, then get it out to the three-point line. So th this guy is so important. When he scores, they're a tough team to beat. Williams and West in the backcourt. Ilgauskas, James, Marajal up front. Ilgauskas open. And Turgula was on it. Outed by Marajal. Alston around James. Rejected from behind. Saved by Howard. Still lot, lots of time on the clock. The alley oop thrown by Turgula. What a beautiful pass at Howard. Able to put it down on the reverse. A little nervous time here at the queue. Not used to close games here. Cleveland has been so dominant at home, both in the regular season and in the playoffs. The lead is down to six. Shot clock to five. James. Yes. Has he missed a jump oh, shot no. after that 0 for 4 start? Oh, he's been magnificent. Putting the move on Ilgauskas. Looks like Farajal got it from behind. That's what they want to do. Swarm down, turn him into a pack, and then try to bother his shot from behind. We've seen LeBron do it a couple times. That time it was Farajal. Oh, what a pass. Wow. And that'll count. It's a goal, Ted. Farajal gets credit for the bucket, the assist for LeBron. You know what happens when you are out there playing against Cleveland? You get caught ball watching. You're watching LeBron, and all of a sudden, Verjao's cutting in behind you. That's got to be at least four layups that he's got tonight, just cutting to the basket in the open area. Ten point for Verjao, 75-65, Cleveland. Here's Turgaloo. Pass intended for Verjao. On the turnover, back comes Alston. Lee off the wing. Nicely done. Courtney. We have not seen a lot of fast breaks tonight from Orlando. One of the reasons why is Cleveland has done such a great job of taking care of the ball. They only had one turnover, 14 assists in that first half. They were so efficient. All of a sudden, three turnovers here in this period that's allowed Orlando to get out and run and get some easy hoops. Four minutes, seven seconds to play, third quarter. We're in Cleveland, the home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Featuring the, the new Bruce Springsteen exhibit. Kaboom and the NBA are working together to create great places for kids to play. The New Orleans Hornets partnered with Kaboom to build a playground in their community. Orlando's the White Howard helped kids from a local boys and girls club construct a magic play space in their own backyard. And I am working to build a playground near my hometown and become one of Kaboom's all-star playmakers. I'm Antoine Jameson of the Washington Wizards. The NBA, where Karen happens. 
All right, Doug, let's take a look at the action cam presented by Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen in theaters, June 24th. Well, when you play against great leapers, you'd like to keep your body on them so you don't give them the freedom to run, and it's just so hard for Zydrunas Ogalskis to do that because of the quickness of Dwight Howard. He just rolls right off of him. What great hands that time, though. It looked like that ball almost uh, ticked the rim before he caught it and then was able to get that ball into the basket, but... Uh, I know the Orlando uh, starting backcourt started out the first half one of seven only three points four of six here for nine points to start this third quarter much more aggressive and uh, they feel like more that it looks like they're in a better flow offensively than they were in the first half. Twenty six points Stan Van Gundy's team showed its toughness in game seven in Boston the other night down here. This evening by as many as 16, and they have made their way back into this game. You know, I don't know if you ever equate teams that shoot a lot of threes as being tough, but this team has a lot of mental toughness. They really do. It's number four left in the third. The pass intended for Varajal deflected out. Last touch by Lewis. Cavaliers have 10 on the on the shot clock. Joe Should Smith will get back in. Number 32, Joel Smith. Played seven minutes in the uh, first half. Hit uh, both his shot attempts. Adrenas of Gauskitz uh, to the bench with eight points, ten rebounds. Well, West tried to get it down low, and it's broken up. Lee putting moves on Williams. And lost it. It trapped him successfully. Smith. Rebounded by Lewis. Alston and Lee in the backcourt. Petrus is back. He is up front with Howard and Lewis. Shot clock to five. Alston had it slapped away. Last touch by Cleveland. And now Wally Serbiak will return. Back on the fourth year, Cavaliers. Replacing both. Four on the shot clock. And Serbiak comes on for Williams. Sits down with 12 points, five assists. And you can see one of the things that Mike Brown tries to do. He always tries to have three shooters and a big guy out there to play with LeBron. So he's always got targets if you're going to double team. And here's Rashard Lewis three. with a long Rashard three. Lewis. So he's starting to come to life. Now he has 10, Turkoglu six. They've combined now for 16. Now four of 11 from beyond that three-point line. This a team that has great success with the three-point shot during the regular season. Second of the NBA. Here's James. That was a three-point attack. Able to follow his shot. Tracked it down. And they have the new clock. James wasting no time. Good box out by Howard. Here comes Alston. Petrus for three. Yes. That's a concern right there. That is what Mike Brown has talked about for about eight days. Transition defense. Orlando doesn't run for layups. They run to the three-point line. All of a sudden, we got a two-point game here. And they are a team because of the success from three-point land. They score in spurts. They have one going right now. Eight consecutive points to move with him to. Shot clock down to two. James, yes. And I think if you're Stan Van Gundy, you said, look, we'll live with LeBron James taking long twos. He had just missed two in a row. You can make him be a jump shooter and keep him out of the paint. Orlando's done their job. Petrus again. Like That's a Petrus. two for Petrus. Cavaliers up 77, 75, and the things have really heated up here in the third quarter. LeBron has hit four or five from the field. In the third, he has 34 points in all, now being played by Lee. James with a long three. <laughs> Seven for James. Austin, a strong move. And the foul.
Well, I like what Ray Peralta's doing. I thought he was very tentative in the first half. LeBron James was guarding him. He did not go at him on the dribble at all. You've seen him now two or three times here in this period. Go to the basket. LeBron stepping back, knocking down another long jump shot. 37 points, and then Rafer Alston just jumps right into the chest of Anderson Verajal. He'll be shooting free throws when we come back. We got it back to 10. Now let's fight it to six right now. Hey, get a stop right now. We had it to six, it's back to eight. Let's get it down to four now, that's all. Just keep fighting. Come on, we're right there, let's go. And you got to love the passion of Stan Van Gundy. This guy's a really a good coach. You know, Marv, you think about when he took over in Miami, I think they lost their first seven games when he got there, took over Pat Riley, and turned the reins over him after a long time assistantship. He did such a good job there. Got him to the conference finals where they lost to the Detroit Pistons. Has come in here to Orlando and has still the real passion with this team. And, you know, we start looking at the numbers, nine fast break points for the Orlando Magic in this quarter. Marv, they had six in the first half, so they're getting the running game going. They only had two threes in the first half. They've hit three in this third period. They have 44 points in the paint, so all of a sudden, the inside-outside game, the fast break, and we look up, that's why they're only down two points now. Ray Ralston able to complete the three-point play. He now has 11 points for the game. Eight have come here in the third quarter. James is fouled by Howard. That's number four on Dwight Howard. I think Dwight Howard would have been okay on that play had he not brought his arm down. I think they would have given him a little bit of contact with the body. But once you're at the last minute with his arm, right there, when you bring that arm down, that's going to draw attention to you. They would have given him this little bump right here. But once he brought that arm down, that's going to be a foul. James, two of three at the line. He has 37 points. He had 26 of the 37 of the first half, which is a Cavaliers franchise playoff record. A reminder, national coverage of the NBA playoffs continues tomorrow on ESPN. Game two of the Nuggets and the Lakers. The Lakers coming from behind to pull it out last night at home. Cover starts 8 o'clock Eastern time. Friday right here on TNT. Game two of the Magic and the Cavs starting 8 o'clock Eastern Time, and then Saturday on ABC Game 3 between the Lakers and the Nuggets. So LeBron James missing on both free throws, and Orlando with a chance to tie or take the lead. They've trailed by 16. Lee comes up short. There's James on the run. James is fouled. When you play against LeBron James, Mark, you cannot backpedal. What you have to do is almost turn around and sprint and get to the restricted area. Because watch what happens. You start backpedaling, you, you can't do that. You're in trouble now when you backpedal because he's too fast and too strong. You've got to turn and then try to get to that uh, restricted area right in front of it and try to have him run over the top. Maybe that time, Peter, was just a little slow getting there. Now Stan Van Gundy going with Martin Bortat and Tony Battee as White Howard sat down after that fourth foul. Anderson Varajel heads to the bench. Ben Wallace is back. And Daniel Gibson in the game for the first time. This is a guy who's really struggled shooting the ball, but he's very capable of getting hot. Remember a couple of years back as a rookie, he had a couple of sensational games against the Pistons. Now that game six, you and I and Steve Kerr did in there. He was fabulous. He was the guy who closed the deal. And an offensive foul on Peters. That's one of the reasons why LeBron James has been a candidate for Defensive Player of the Year. Gets in great position here. Tell you what, Mark, when you look at the Defensive Team of the Year, you know, the guys who made all defense, they're also some of the best offensive players in the league. I think the guy who set the standard for that was Michael Jordan. Michael was not only the best offensive player in the game, he was the best defensive player in the game. And when you see these great stars playing both ends of the floor, it so separates them from the pack. And in the past, that award would usually be won by a lockdown defender. There are very few of those. See, these guys are more spectacular defenders. Shot blocker, guys who go for steals. Shot clock to three. James has to fire it up and comes up short. 
And it's a 24 second violation. Orlando Ball. Orlando has to feel very good about how they've worked themselves back into this game. If they don't score, it's only a two possession game. And I think the concerns, if you're Cleveland, is really right now the only guy who has it going is LeBron James, Marvin. If, I mean, if, if, if they just force him to try to win this game by themselves, they could be trouble in the fourth quarter. There's 2.4 to go. And now they apparently they, they just changed the clock. And uh, 4.3 remaining. There's Alston racing it down, gets it to Lou, fires. And that's the end of the third quarter. The Magic outscoring the Cavaliers 30 to 19 in the third. As they cut into that 16 point lead. The Cavaliers by four as we head to the fourth. When we come back, Craig will talk with Cleveland head coach Mike Brown. We're back at the queue in Cleveland, which is adjacent to Progressive Field, the home of the Cleveland Indians. A nice shot from above. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. New Fuel Max tires help tires help you get there on less gas. Calculate your savings at GoodyearTires.com. Just moments ago, Craig Silver caught up with Cleveland head coach Mike Brown. Well, Coach, after a terrific defensive first half, Orlando put up 30 points in that third quarter. Where were the defensive breakdowns? You know what? They did a nice job with their pick-and-pop game. Rashard hit a couple of jump shots. We thought the PH just hit some tough shots uh, in that quarter, too. And we have to make sure that we keep trying to contest, even if we're contesting late to their jump shooters. LeBron James with 39 points has maintained the lead. But he's not getting a lot of help offensively. Who needs to step up? Uh, you know what? Uh, Mo had some great looks. He got to knock those looks down. Uh, Z had a couple of jump shots that were pretty good. We just have to keep playing basketball. Keep trying to get the ball moving. We came to a little bit of a standstill that quarter. And hopefully we'll get the ball going from one side of the court to the other in this quarter. All right, thanks, Lat. Back to Marvin Doug. All right, Craig, and the Cavaliers got the ball moving on that first possession of the fourth quarter as Mo Williams was able to drill it. LeBron James getting a rest back on the bench for Shard Lewis again. Lewis. So he has picked it up, and the Cavs have an 84-80 lead on the Magic. Well, that's the pick-and-pop game that Mike Brown was just talking to with Craig Sager. They're getting Rashard Lewis on the move, setting that screen and rolling out. Williams this time too strong. Good play by Johnson as he's able to deflect it. Oh, look out. Mo Williams and Anthony Johnson being uh, kept apart by Ron Garrison. The concern right now for Mike Brown is who's going to help him off the bench. Mark, you see games one and two against the Hawks. So look at games three and four on the road. Tonight only five points. They've been outscored 21 to five off that bench. And now with LeBron on the bench here with uh, a little rest, who's going to step up for the uh, Cavs? There's that uh, Rashard Lewis once again, that pick and pop there. The old. Uh, Adage in basketball is keep running the same play over again until they stop you. And right now, they don't have any answers for Richard Lewis on that same play. He's 6 of 10. He has 14 points. The Magic within two. Gibson and Williams now in the backcourt. There's Williams making the turn. Gibson lost the handle, recovers. Did not hit the rim, so it's a 24-second violation of the ball back to Orlando. Yeah, Mike Brown says, I'm getting my star back in the game, LeBron James. He's not going to sit over there very long, and with that violation, LeBron is not going to be able to come in with a substitution. So Orlando has a chance here if they knock down a three to take the lead. White Howard sitting it out after picking up that fourth foul. We're top back in at the center position. Johnson for three. Yes! The Orlando Magic coming from 16 down at the lead for the first time tonight, and the Cavaliers call for time. The resiliency of the Orlando Magic. Stan Van Gundy said our trademark is when our back is to the wall, we are at our best. 7-0 run here by Orlando. That three-point shooting starting to go, and it's quiet here in the arena. Come on, we're right there now. Don't let up. They have not been here this year. Everything's been easy for them. They don't know about this. We do. All right, let's get it out right here. Well, this one Stan was talking about. This guy is 
doing his best to motivate his team through this, but this is how dominant they have been. 8-0, look at the scoring margin. The opponent's points only 78. The most they've given up all year in the playoffs is 85, which is what Orlando's sitting on right now. They've dominated the boards. Every game they've won has been by 10 or more points. Well, now they're into a fight, and this is what the playoffs are all about. And my big concerns right now for Cleveland is who's going to make some shots beside LeBron. Joe Smith made a couple. Wally Zerbiak has not made a shot tonight. And Mo Williams and Delonte West are combined eight for 25. And so if they can keep LeBron taking tough two-point shots, they've got a great chance to win this game. That's a great statement. They don't know about this. Right. We do. And the 85 points equals the most that the Cavaliers have allowed the first two series of the playoffs. Smith for three. Well, the hustle play kept it alive, and James scores. Serbiak hitting the floor and was able to get it to James. So the Cavaliers back up by one. And all this being done right now with uh, Dwight Howard on the bench with foul, so the Magic have played very well with the caught into the game. That pass intended for Gortat, and the outside official oh, Bennett Salvatore says it was deflected out of bounds. It's a great call right here. LeBron gets that ball. You see that ball is deflected. Up to White Howard back into the game. So Todd right did his job in there, came in, gave him some good minutes, and Howard now back in for the finish with his four fouls. Defense! Defense! Shot clock at seven. Turgalo. And uh, Petrus able to get to it. Uh, extra shots, extra possessions. And then anytime you shoot long jumpers, there's going to be long rebounds. Johnson trying with three, rebounded by Serbiak. Orlando only 8 of 22 shooting in the first quarter. Since then, they've shot 65%. And now trailing by one. Petrus is back on. James. Shot clock to three. James, 4-3. That's a tough possession. When that ball starts sticking, that's what Mike Brown talked about. They're not moving the basketball right now. There's that lob once again. You've got to keep your body on Dwight Howard. I know it's easier said than done, but you cannot let him roll off you, Mark. You have to make him step to the ball and catch it and make a shot. Howard that time able to beat Smith, who turned his head. Howard 13 of 19. He has 28 points. The Magic up by one. Here's West just to get it off on time. Rebounded by Howard. Has to be, he has to be very careful. That time it's it's on Serbiak. But Howard playing with the, the four fouls. A great eye contact. This is twice now. Turkaloo's made that little pass. You've got to have more pressure on the passer, and you've got to have him step to the ball, even if it means you have to give up and play behind him a little bit. But this is twice now we've seen this tonight with that brilliant pass and the finish. Anderson Marajal, Zdrinos Ilgowskis back on the floor for the Cavaliers. Eight minutes to play in the fourth. There's Howard putting a move on Ilgowskis and banks it home. A quick first step again. You know, Ilgowskis does not get his body on him, Martin. You talked about how Kendrick Perkins had his body and made him play against his force. Howard's got the freedom to roam against Z. An 11-2 run for the Magic. Ilgowskis, yes. Now he can do that, and what will happen is when Howard playing him now, he can drag, uh, excuse me, he can drag him away from the basket. Oh, Whistle over at the uh, far side by Ron Garrison, indicating a foul on Mo Williams. Seventeen foul. So the Cavs with their second team foul. One point, Orlando leads. And the foul again on Williams. That time he just thought he was going to run right through the pick of Dwight Howard, hoping he would get a moving screen, which would have been the fifth foul on Dwight Howard. Howard does not move on the play. And a little bit he steps out there, but uh, 
Uh, very fortunate here that he did not get called for his fifth foul. That would have been his third offensive foul of the game. Shot clock to five. Turgalo. Williams on it. Here comes James. And now looks to pull it back. West for three. Rebounded by Turgalo. So he's just not making shots now. 8 of 27 now for West and Mo Williams. These are guys that all season long have been able to make shots playing off of LeBron James. When you were going to double him and get the ball out of his hands, those guys made you pay tonight. Not the case. Again, 8 of 27 for those two guys. We've been talking about the superb home record of the Cavaliers. Orlando, one of the best road teams of the NBA, 27 and 14 during the season. They've won three on the road in the postseason. That's a three attempted by Petrus, rebounded by James. You see the confidence that Stan Van Gundy has in Anthony Johnson going with him now down the stretch instead of Ray for Austin. Johnson now defending on James. James talking to him. See face guarding by, by Johnson. But once again, the ball stopped, but James got the step, then lost it. Here comes Johnson. Picks it out. Petrus. And he's fouled by Williams. That's number four on Mo Williams. This is what Orlando did in the regular season. They, they shut the lane down. And after the great start that uh, Cleveland had scoring in the paint, they're now being outscored by 14 in the paint. See what happened when LeBron James comes in there. There's Dwight Howard closing it down. The ball knocked out of his hands. And then this is when they want to get out and run. Actually, Anthony Johnson sort of poked that ball away in from, uh, from behind. And uh, the fast break game, six points in the first half fast break, sitting on 16 now. So this could be their 11th and 12th fast break points in the second half, which has sort of changed the game. He pushed to the line for the first time. Cal Petrus spent five years with Golden State, first round pick of the Warriors, signed as a free agent by Orlando. He's been set back by injuries, been out earlier this season with a, a fractured wrist. He has really come on in the postseason. And that huge game seven against the, the Celtics Sunday night. 90 to 88, the Magic on top, six minutes to play in this fourth quarter. Bergeau gets inside. See Howard stepped away. See, Bergeau can catch that ball in traffic. LeBron has a lot of confidence in him. If he throws that ball, he'll go down and get it. Game tied at 90. Ball was deflected out by Williams. Time out the ball. The Cavaliers of the Magic. All even. Uh, Orlando you know coming from 16 back. All right, here's the upcoming schedule presented by Degree for Men. Well, game two. Here in Cleveland on Friday night. We'll have it for you on TNT, 8 o'clock right. Eastern Time. Sunday, the scene shifts to Orlando. Games 3 and 4. Move on to Central Florida. Sunday and Tuesday nights. And then, uh, if necessary, games 5, 6, and 7. All exclusively here on TNT. Well, now this season gets really compressed after all the time off for the Cavaliers. Nine days between the first and second round eight here now but starting this series every other day with travel now so now all of a sudden you're going to start to see the concerns out for cleveland is they're not getting any help off their bench mark the, the uh, orlando magic has gone to their bench tonight they're 10 of 16 for 25 points cleveland two of seven for five so plus 20 off the bench and uh, the one thing, if you look at Cleveland this year, you look at, and these, this is total points. So Kobe and LeBron didn't even play in 14 of the uh, fourth quarters. But Hedo Turco and Dwight Howard, you see where they are, 25th and 51st. Uh, so who's going to close the deal here for Orlando? Dwight Howard called for the travel, the ball back to the, the uh, Cavaliers. You mentioned Kobe and LeBron not playing and a number of uh, fourth quarters because their teams were involved in blowouts. Cleveland won 41 games this year by 10 or more mm -hmm. points. 
There's Ogowskis with room. Rebounded by Alston. LeBron James leading the way for the Cavs with 41. 30 points for Dwight Howard. Here's Kergler with a long three. You know That's what he'll do. We saw it in the uh, Philadelphia game when he knocked down that game winner. The big shots he made. He had 10 fourth quarter points the other day in Boston in that game. Seven to go along with his big 12 big assists. He has been missed the fourth quarter. Just under five remaining. In the fourth, three-point Orlando lead. Ilgelskis. Hopped away from Alston, and another possession for the Cavaliers. Well, the Cleveland offense has come to a standstill. They're not moving the ball, holding it too much. And that clock is starting to work against them. Williams for three, way off. All of a sudden, now you start feeling the pressure go to the Cavaliers here at home. Orlando trying to break through in game one to get the home court. Try to lead it to Howard. A weak pass picked off. Here's James. He went one on three, and he was fouled up top by Alston. Well, Turkoglu was going to try to throw another lob to Dwight Howard. He's had two of those already. We saw going to break. That time he said the ball slipped out of his hands. LeBron just went up and snatched it out of the air. Out of four minutes remaining in the fourth. What they like to go to this a little middle pick and roll, 3 1 screen roll to try to get a switch to get Alston to play him. And here's James got the step. That's a money play. What happens is they put Zagunas Ogalskis out behind the three point line to try to drag the big man away to open up the lane. That's the money play that Cleveland likes to go to. LeBron now with 43 out of 47 point performance against Atlanta. Turgaloo. You know, nice move by Turgaloo. 11 points for Hito and the Magic with a 95 92 lead. And Van Gundy staying with Petrus on James. Shot clock out of five. James to the left hand. <laughs> That's just a brilliant shot. The shot clock winding down once again. LeBron is spending a lot of energy. Well, he's got that ball in his hands about 20 seconds on each possession. Alston for three. Berger on the rebound. Well, you could feel the fans holding their breath on that three from Alston. That would have put them up four. 22nd timeout being called by Mike Brown. And now they they change to a full with Orlando up by one. Well, sometimes you take a timeout, not so much for strategy, but to give your guy a rest. I think LeBron James is a little tired here to get this timeout. Back in Cleveland, time for the Marine Seaward play of the game. Well, oh, this is Mike Brown's concern, the prolific three-point shooting of the Orlando Magic, five for 10 in the second half from five different guys here, all hitting different different angles. Beatrice, we've seen Austin, we've seen great, uh, Richard Lewis this time, it's Anthony Johnson, and then Turk Lewis at the top. LeBron goes under that screen. Like I said, a little fatigue there went to that last timeout. And what a difference a series makes. Cleveland has been so good defensively through the first two rounds. Look tonight what they've given up. Field goal percentage from the Magic who got off to an 8 for 22 start the first quarter. Look at the rebounding. How about points in the paint? This game just changed dramatically, Marv, starting the third period. And, and this is what I was talking about. During the timeout, it's like, give me a 20-second timeout. LeBron is tired. He is working so hard on every possession. Mike Brown goes over and taps him. Get a little rest. So sometimes it's not strategy with your timeouts. It's to give your star a rest for the finish. And now they're only down to one timeout. Orlando two full and a 20. The Magic taking their first lead two minutes into the fourth quarter after trailing by as many as 16 and trailing by double digits most of the game. You know, Marvin, another thing, too, when you take eight full days off, you cannot simulate and practice the conditioning. And LeBron looked like he was getting his legs rubbed down there by the athletic trainer, Max Benton. So you got to wait, make sure he doesn't start cramping up. Cavaliers in possession. They are down by one. 
There's James. Rebounded by Turgaloo. Petrus forcing James further out to his right. There's Turgaloo. Lewis for three. The Orlando Magic, second in the NBA in total three-pointers made and attempted during the regular season, setting franchise records in both categories. And earlier in the year, and a win at Sacramento set a new NBA record as they hit 23 in a game. Williams wow. right back from downtown. Boy, he had been struggling. Five of 17 before he took that shot. That was a gigantic shot by Mo Williams. Orlando by one and a foul as they try to trap Turgaloo. Foul on Ilgowskis. And Mo Williams it uh, just sort of fades that three-point line. And Rashard Lewis got to close out on him, make him put that ball on the floor. Mo Williams is not going to run away from his shot. I mean, he's very confident that he can knock him down. And now Orlando's going to be shooting free throws, free throws the rest of the period. Cleveland over the limit with that foul. And Turgaloo. Out three of three at the line. TBS Wednesdays. Brown is back. Get the family together for the new season premiere of Tyler Perry's Meet the Browns right after brand new episodes of House of Pain. That's May 27th, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. On TBS, a turtle, a 81% free throw shooter during the regular season. All the Magic guys are really pretty good free throw shooters, except the Wyatt Howard. So it's going to be interesting to see how much he touches the ball here in the last couple minutes, Mark. Howard only 59% during the regular season, right around that, uh, that mark during the playoffs. Petrus knocked it away, but James recovers. Here's LeBron taking to the rim and a foul. So James to the line. He's four of seven at the line. He has 45 points, his all-time playoff high, 48 in that sensational game against Detroit back in 2007. Now watch Mo Williams here. You see off the ball, he and Courtney Lee getting tied up. No call on that play. Courtney Lee saying he's grabbing me. Mo Williams is uh, trying to beat his case with uh, Ron Garrison. That's three free throws now LeBron has missed in this quarter. And again, I don't want to beat this uh, to death at all, but, you know, they, they have not played that many minutes in the last eight, nine days. I mean, to try to simulate that in practice, you can't do that, the speed of the game. In this second half, they've ground down. As they've gotten tired, the ball has stopped moving. That's a two-point Orlando lead. A minute and a half to go in the fourth. Here's Lee, Turgler, shot clock to six. Turgler draws the foul. It is on Verizhau, who is very upset. And the question is, was it three-point territory or was his foot on the line? Well, they'll take a look at it here. They'll, they'll take a look and make sure to see. But this is a great pump fake by Turkle. Let's see if he jumps in. It's like he sort of leans into Verizhal, but that's what you got to do, Marvin. You got to, you get a guy up in the air, you got to try to sell that. And Verizhal does not like the call. Bennett Salvatore is going to take a look here to see if it's a two or a three. It's now being reviewed to determine whether Let's see a look two, from four, three, above. It's tough to tell. Well, he steps in with that right foot, so that's going to be a two. Marv, he stepped in, and before he released the shot, his right foot was well inside that three-point line. So as he stepped in, that's when he got the contact. What a game for Hito Turgaloo. Playoff career high, 13 assists. He had 12 the other night against Boston. Now this is a closer look. Yeah, but watch it though. Now see that ball is still in his hand. See that right foot is well inside the line there. So that's going to be a two-shot foul. The ruling on the floor stands. It is a two-point attempt, and that's what the call is. Did not release the ball until he stepped exactly. over. Exactly. Now, now, now these free throws become important because obviously you make two, you make it a two-possession game. And what we've seen from Cleveland here over the last few minutes, basically the second half, is get the ball in LeBron's hands and let him go to work. Turgaloo, 81 percent during the regular season, and he's five for five tonight. 101-98, Orlando. 
Trying to steal home court advantage from the Cavaliers, although the Cavaliers, similar to the Magic, very successful on the road, as you'd imagine when you won 66 games and won 66 and 16 during the regular season. Four point Magic lead. Rogowskis finding Farazan. Two-point game as we come up on a minute to play. Well, now can this vaunted Cleveland defense come up with a defensive stop without fouling? Petrus very calmly fires up a three. As Delonte Westman flies by. Cavaliers can tie or take the lead. Down to 45 seconds to go in the fourth. West for three. And the lead. Delonte West off the beautiful look from LeBron James to give the Cavaliers a one point lead. You know, Marv, when you evaluate players, one of the skills that you evaluate is toughness. Toughness under pressure. Mo Williams had not shot it well. He knocked down a three. Delonte West is struggling. He knocks down a three. Mental toughness under pressure. Cleveland Cavaliers have taken a 103-102 lead on the Orlando Magic. Delonte West a moment ago knocking down his third three of the night to get that lead. He had hit two others, but that was back in the first quarter. You know what remind me of the Laker game last night against Denver? You know, Kobe's got the ball, and he kicks it out to Ariza, who knocks down a three, and then it's Fisher. Tonight, it's LeBron with the basketball. He has 46 points. And it's Mo Williams and Delonte West. Those guys are a combined 10 of 30, but both hit big three-point shots when it looked like the game was slipping away. Can they get a stop? The Magic is going to put the ball in Turkaloo's hands, and I'm sure that LeBron James will be guarding him. Both teams over the, the foul limit, and Hito Turkaloo with nine of his... 15 points in this fourth quarter. Now they like to run a play where Dwight Howard steps out and catches the ball and Turkulu gets a handoff coming back into the middle of the floor. That's a play they use to run a lot. Alston watched by Williams. Here's Lewis. Yes! A clutch shot by Rashard Lewis. And the Magic back up by one. As James to the bucket, draws the foul, and that's the count and the foul. Cleveland has recaptured the lead. And that on Dwight Howard is number six. Now, Marv, remember one of my keys I talked about? The imprint. Who was going to put their imprint on the game? Was it going to be the MVP of the league or the defensive player of the year? How about this? LeBron James takes the ball right at Dwight Howard, gets the contact, and has the strength and wherewithal to finish this off and try to make this a three-point play. But remember now, the way that Orlando shoots that three ball, Cleveland has got to make sure they defend that three-point line. James, five of nine at the line. It is a three-point play, and it is a new career playoff high for LeBron James with 49 points. And you see LeBron, he's going one stop. We need one stop. So 25 and six ten seconds to go in this fourth quarter. The Magic taking a timeout so they have one left Cavaliers with one timeout remaining this is where as a defensive team you have to have great discipline and on any kind of drive you can't leave a shooter in the corner for that easy kick out pass you can help with the basket but you cannot lose your discipline a two ties you a three can beat you so you do not want to leave a three-point shooter
Let's take a look back at some of the keys he set up at the start of the telecast. Well, the Cavs got off to the great start after the eight full days rest, the transition game, the magic. It's been all in the second half, and they've come to life at that three-point line. They've hit five or six in the second half. The defense never rests. The magic, 104 points tonight, 55% field goal shooting, and the imprint. Cleveland one stop away from taking a 1-0 lead. And Orlando, one three-pointer away from maybe stealing the home court. There's a second and a half differential between the game clock and shot clock. Cavaliers up by two. Lewis pops it out to Turgaloo. Lewis for three. Yes! Orlando has taken a one point lead and we are seeing clutch shot after clutch Play shot down the stretch. See the interesting thing there is Mike Brown went with two big guys. Instead of going maybe with a smaller lineup where you could match he went with two big guys and Barajal all on the move on that play. Can't quite close out on Richard Lewis after a slow start. Richard Lewis now with 22 points. Will that be enough? Cleveland just used its final timeout. 14 and 7 10 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. And the Magic in front 107 106. Now, the thing with Cleveland having no timeouts, Mark, if they, if they run this clock down and take a shot and don't score, you got a foul. But then you can't move the ball. So chances are they're going to have to maybe go sooner than they would like to go simply because they've got to give themselves a chance if they miss to foul and get the ball back and have to go for a full court length of the court. So let's see what they do here in this possession. Wally Serbiak has checked back in. Mo Williams will put it in play. Remember now, no Dwight Howard to guard the rim in case uh, LeBron James goes to that basket. And uh, James puts a move on Petrus who went down. They swing it. His wish. Not able to hit. He hit from that spot a moment ago. Down to one second. And a jump ball is called with one second remaining. Mark, it almost looked like that ball went up and hit the back of the backboard. And if so, that stanchion, that would have been out of bounds. Let's let's take a look here and see. When that ball is deflected, you see Cotard was going to run at LeBron, get that ball out of his hands. But watch here on this rebound. Does that ball go underneath the basket? Oh, I guess it did. I thought it might have hit underneath. So one second here for a catch and shoot. This is nearly impossible off a jump ball. Well, you know he's going to tip it back to Mo Williams, and Mo Williams is going to be the guy that gets the shot. Pergolo and James, and a Salvatore with the toss. Here it is. Williams in one motion got it off and went back for him. The Orlando Magic have defeated the Cleveland Cavaliers 107-106. That was a great opportunity for her. That shot almost went and very close to almost being a foul on that play. Watch this now. Great play here by LeBron all in one motion. Very close to going in. I tell you, this Orlando Magic team, this second half, what did they show their mental toughness? There's a shot that he misses and uh, we see LeBron James out here. I, I think he's cramping up. I, I think you look at him as it looks like his right leg has a cramp. And we saw that happening about the last three or four minutes of the game when Mike Brown had to take that timeout uh, that they could have desperately used at the end of the game. But they had they had to give LeBron some rest. LeBron James goes 41 minutes, 20 of 30 from the field, a playoff career high of 49 points. Cleveland led by as many as 16, but the magic kept coming. The game winner by Rashard Lewis, who finished with 22 points, 12 coming in the fourth. He hit his last seven shots. Dwight Howard, who fouled out, had 30 points, 14 of 20 from the field and, and 13 rebounds. You see the cramping there in his right leg as uh, athletic trainer Max Benton is out looking at him. But are we talking about Turkaloo and Lewis in the second half? They were going to have to come to life as well as Ray for Alston. Look at Turkaloo. I think uh, he and uh, Lewis had combined for 11 points in the first half. They, they had ended up with 37. So by my math, they had 26 points in the second half. And when you look at uh, Cleveland after that great first half of 63 points, 
43 in the second half. So they really came to a screeching halt in that second half when they started uh, holding the basketball. And the Cavaliers lose for the first time in the postseason after sweeping Detroit and Atlanta while the Magic take a 1-0 lead in this Eastern Conference Final, and they do it here at the Q in Cleveland. Let's go to Craig Sager. Craig. Well, thank you, Mark Whitney. Dwight Howard with his 30 points. Rashard Lewis with his 22 and the game-winning three. You guys were down by 16. Your coach didn't give up. You guys didn't give up. How much did you learn from your Game 7 victory in Boston, and how tough is this team mentally? Yeah, you got to play 48 minutes. You can't come out here and let them hit us first. We got to set the tone early. We got to hit them first. But the most important thing is you got to play 48 minutes. We thought we felt like we only played one half, and that was the second half only. You carried this team throughout the game until the game-winning three-pointer start out with that dunk that brought down the shot clock. What did it mean to you? I know you played with LeBron during the Olympics. He scored 49, but you guys still came away with a win. How big a victory is this for you? It's a big victory. Uh, we kept fighting the whole game, and that's what we have to do. You know, we fought our way back. I just told my guys, we got to keep fighting, keep fighting. The game not over. So we believe from the beginning that we was going to win, and we can't fight them. Congratulations. Terrific win. Nice three-pointer. Richard Lewis, the game winner. They win by one. Let's go back over to Marv. All right, Craig, and the combination of Hito Turgaloo and Richard Lewis scored the last 17 points for the Magic. Orlando with a dramatic 107-106 victory here in Cleveland in game one. This an Orlando team that came back from a three games to two deficit against the Boston Celtics and pulled out that series in Boston in a game seven the other night. Thanks to our producer Scooter Bertino, director Renato Lowe, our statistician Paul Evans. Coming up next, following a quick break, we'll return to Cleveland for the award winning inside the NBA with Ernie Charles Kenny and Reggie Miller. So for Craig Sager and Doug Collins, I'm Marv Albert saying good night from the Q in Cleveland.